Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar In this week's Friday sermon, Hazur Adad al Aziz continued on the series of lives of the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and specifically mm-hmm. Hazrat Usman r.a. who was the third of the rightly guided caliphs. Hazur continued from the previous sermon where he informed us that Hazrat Usman Anahu suffered various forms of persecution from rebels and faced this persecution with patience, perseverance and forbearance. Now over to Madhabir Deen Sahib who will give us some further insight into this sermon. Assalamu alaikum. Auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Jazakallah Qasim Sahib for um, having me. <clears throat> so as you mentioned, um, Hazuri Anwar Ayyad Lahur Wa Ta'ala bin Asil Aziz was, um, his, his whole term was about, um, was about Hazrat Usman Razi Rata Al-Anhu and particularly his last uh, few years of his life and um, focusing on his demise and his martyrdom. So as we mentioned that uh, Hazrat Usman Razi Rata Al-Anhu performed his last Hajj a year before his demise and at that time the rebels had already started creating disorder. Um, then we know that uh, Hazrat Usman Nazirat Allah Anho was imprisoned within his own home and finally uh, the rebels attacked and um, he was he was martyred. Um, but after this, Hazur started mentioning um, some of Hazrat Usman's uh, special attributes, some of his extraordinary virtues. Um, for example, during this miscon during this uh, the the misconduct done by the rebels, um, Hazrat Usman had many opportunities where he could um, call upon Muslims to protect him, to protect his house, to protect his family, and uh, even he had armies at his disposal where they could come and protect him. But at no point did Hazrat Usman allow this, for he didn't want any bloodshed, any blood to be spilled in his name. Or for his sake. And um, Hazul mentioned this, Hazul mentioned another very important point that Hazrat Usman never feared martyrdom. He knew that there's there's an uprise uh, from the rebels and there's this whole disorder, but he would continuously, he would go to the mosque. Um, and he knew that the going there is, uh, is putting his life at risk and many of his companions advised him, but he still, he still went, which shows that he didn't fear this uh, the martyrdom. Another another point that uh, Hazur Enwa mentioned was that um, when the rebels actually attacked the house of Hazrat Usman Anhu, he at that time was reading the Holy Quran, and um, the son of Hazrat Abu Bakr Anhu, he came and approached him to attack him, and even then he explained to him with reason of what he is doing is wrong. So all these things, Hazul says that there's all this evidence shows that Hazrat Usman Anhu had no fear. He knew that all this uprises, uprising is happening. The rebels are out for blood and um, they're creating all this disorder. But at no point did he show or feel any fear in this. Then a very beautiful incident that was mentioned uh, by Hazul. And he said that at one point, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this incident really shows the, um, the character and status of Hazrat Usman Anhu in the eyes of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So um, at, at, at one occasion, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, uh, was lying down and uh, Hazrat Abu Bakr Razi Anhu walked in and the Holy Prophet uh, continued lying down then after that Hazrat Umar who walked in and the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, continued lying down then Hazrat Usman who he walked in and then all of a sudden the Holy Prophet وسلم, he straightened his clothes and uh, sat upright and he said that um, you know Hazrat Usman has has um, has immense uh, decency and um, for that reason, to keep his feelings intact, or to, to care for his feelings, this is why I've done this. So that just shows how much, uh, um, what level of decency Hazrat Usman had and what kind of special rank he had, his, the highest of virtues. 
um, were uh, were within him. But then another very great honor that was bestowed on the on uh, Hazrat Usman Lajatan was that he was from among the Ashram of Basha, which are the ten companions that have been promised paradise. And then to, to an even further honor is that six companions were were given the honor, were given the, the glad tiding that they would have a lofty status in paradise. And among those six companions was also Hazrat Usman. So all these things show the great status, the lofty status of Hazrat Usman and his extraordinary virtues that made him stand out among the rest. And may Allah Ta'ala enable us to reflect those virtues displayed by Hazrat Usman and that have been explained um, so explicitly by Hazrat Amir in his Friday sermons within our own characters as well. Towards the end of the sermon, Hazur Ida Tabil Nasir Aziz mentioned some funeral prayers in absentia. Uh, and then shall I so me as you could you know they were on a good to go to the town. Well, you can have all we want to do is there was a well, this is library cost cup. Just I started to read. Get the money shop. Of course, it allows give out the hot pocket and I live in a region. I request to share to share it here. और इब्तिदाई तालीम के बाद ये बुकिना फासो चले गए दुनियावी तालीम के साथ अरबी ज़बान में महारत हासिल की 60 की दिहाई में उन्होंने कुबले अमीर किया 1983 में अपनी दिली खुशी के साथ पाकिस्तान गए जहां जामे अहमदी अरबों में तालीम हासिल करने के बाद आवरी कोस में बतौर मुबलक इंतज़ार की तोफ़ीक पाई सदीक जालूसा है मौलवी इदरीस तेरोसाए जमात और खिलाफत के दीवाने थे जो हर वक्त जमात की खातिर हर कुर्बानी के लिए तैयार रहते थे कहते हैं मैं आवी कोस में इनसे ज्यादा जमात से मोहब्बत करने वाला मैंने आवी कोस में उनसे ज्यादा जमात से मोहब्बत करने वाला कोई शख्स नहीं देखा जब से उनसे जब उनसे पूछा जाता कि आपकी नेशनलिटी क्या है जो जवाब दिया करते थे कि ना मैं अफ्रीकन हूं ना मैं यूरोपियन हूं ना कोई और मेरी नेशनलिटी मेरी पहचान मेरी कौम अहमदियत है Ivory Coast के वलीन अहमदियों में से थे बासस साहब बोलगा Ivory Coast लिखते हैं हमेशा खिलाफत से वापसता रहने की तलकीन करते और कहा करते थे कि मैंने जो भी फैज पाया खिलाफत की बदौलत ही पाया इल्मी लिहाज से बहुत बुलंद पाया इंसान थे जूला जो इनकी मादरी जुबान थी इसके अलावा फ्रेंच अरबी उर्दू पर भी काफी अबूर हासिल था इल्मे कलाम के माहिर और मुनाजर थे वहाबी उलमा के साथ मुनाजरे किया करते थे एक अहमदी भाई अब्दुल्ला साहब ने सांप पैदरों में होने वाले एक मुनादरे का वाकया सुनाया कि वहाबियों की मस्जिद में पहुंचे और मुनादरे के लिए तय किया तय हुआ कि सिर्फ कुरान करीम से दलाल दिए जाएंगे सुबह 8 से लेकर शाम 6 बजे तक मुसलसल मुनादरा जारी रहा जिसके दौरान सिर्फ नमाज का वक्फा किया गया इस दौरान मौलवी साहब ने ऐसे दलाइल मुखालिफ मौलवी साहब को दिए जिसका वो कोई रद्द पेश ना कर सका और अपनी शिकस्त तस्लीम की और अहमियत को इस मुनादरे में फतह नसीब हुई फिर लिखते हैं कि इनकी हसीयत लाइब्रेरी जैसी थी तबलीग के लिए मैदान में आपको हवाला जा जुबानी याद होते थे फिर वो चाहे उर्दू में हो या अरबी में या फ्रेंच में किसी भी जुबान में भी हो हवाला फॉर्म सुना दिया करते थे दुआ को हमेशा अपना हरबा बनाते थे और सबको दुआ करने की नसीहत भी किया करते थे इनकी एक बेटी और चार बेटियां और एक बेटा है अल्लाह ताला इन बच्चों को भी निजाम से तल्लुक में फाल करे और इनकी ख्वाहिशात के मुताबिक उनको निजाम का हिस्सा बनाए कुछ ज्यादा तल्लुक इतना नहीं है लेकिन अल्लाह ताला फजल فرمائے اللہ تعالیٰ ان سے بھی مغفرت و رحم کا سلوک فرمائے درجات بلند کرے